Welcome back, you guys. This is part two of us interviewing Wes Herman, owner and founder of Woods Coffee. Just the equipment, 25,000, versus us starting the whole business for 23,000. We're still moving forward, planning for new stores and our growth and our expansion. It's super important to us to make sure that we're profitable and growing and that they kind of dovetail together. Uh, we've actually been in grocery stores and yeah, okay. uh, uh, that didn't prove to be a great model. From day one, the thing that has sold the most in our coffee shops of our baked goods. I love my yeah. coffee, guys. <laughs> How do you stay competitive? You know, everybody talks about what the markup is, what your profit is, what your net is. We always like to say, what is the last amount of money? Make sure you check out part one in the description below. Check it out first then come back and watch part two. This episode is about growing and scaling your business. The question I have, I guess, is what's your approach to scaling? What are your tips and secrets to scale quickly? Is that a good idea? Walk us through your evolution of scaling from one to 19. Right. You know, people will look at that oftentimes and say, that's what I want to do. I want to grow just like you did. Exactly. And I want to have multiple yeah. locations and things like that. And I always advise them the same way. Um, it's not necessarily the best approach. It has to be part of your business plan. And, you know, back to the business plan. If you follow your business plan and have it laid out exactly what you want to do, then follow it. Uh, you can't just change midstream. Some businesses are much more successful with just one location. In our case, it just happens to be uh, part of our growth plan and part of our experience that we have multiple locations. And it was part of that original plan that we're executing today. Uh, but the, the idea of, uh, you know, how do you scale? How do you grow? Uh, it's really important. We don't put a lot of money into uh, real estate and buying things. Interesting. Uh, we'd really like to keep our capital fluid and moving. And if we can open more stores, we feel that that's uh, better for us. So by not owning your locations, it gives you a greater opportunity to start up new locations. Right, yeah, because we build based on profitability. So it's not like we're going out and borrowing a ton of money to build new locations. We uh, build based on what we've made and how we've been profitable. And so if we're not profitable, we can't grow. And Absolutely. so we try and be very profitable, sustainable, and able to uh, continue what we're doing. Uh, but if that gets all wrapped up into real estate and doesn't allow us the flexibility to start new stores, then that's not what we're about. We, we want to start as many locations as we can. Mm -hmm. All right, I can't wait to order the delicious Woods coffee. So. Great. What will you have today? Uh, you know, I've got my favorite. I like the iced cedar latte, please, with light ice and a little bit of caramel chisel. Yeah, Trying to watch my sugars, Wes. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You just what heard. about you? What's your favorite drink? Uh, you know, I usually have an Americano, but we're here in the afternoon, and I, I really want to sleep tonight, so I'm just going to go with a uh, mango uh, Italian soda with no cream or no whipped cream, please. Yeah, mango. That's it. Perfect. We'll be right out for you. <laughs> and you know what? I can't forget to give you a tip. So let me make sure, you know, we take care of you really well. Always, always there tip your yes. baristas, right? Yeah. Oh, it's, so, it's culture, right? Absolutely. Sure. Thank you, Wes. Pleasure. Cheers. Cheers. What basic coffee shop equipment can you start with? And uh, where do you go find a good deal on them? Mm, good deal. I don't know that you can find a good deal. Uh, there are some good deals. I mean, you can go, uh, when we first started, we bought everything used. It's all we could afford. You know, I told you about the budget. It was twenty-three thousand right. dollars, and so we had to use that very, very carefully. Uh, so we bought some used equipment, um, and uh, the critical parts are an espresso machine, a grinder or two, depending on if you're grinding two types of coffee, regular or decaf, and then uh, you know it's uh, a, a drip coffee machine so that you're serving great drip coffee and those are really critical to have the right machines and then uh, a blender uh, you know it's an ice maker because there's a lot of ice beverages right and um, so you put all that stuff together I mean you know with refrigeration and point of sale machine and you know it all adds up in a hurry uh, so 
Um, but somebody can get away with uh, finding a package for that kind of stuff, you know, your basic equipment. You might be able to do that for $25,000 today. Mm -hmm. So you think about that. Just the equipment, $25,000 versus us starting the whole business for $23,000. So, yeah, times you know, have changed 18 years. Have. Absolutely. A big difference. Makes me feel old. <laughs> Uh, Wes, what's your markup on variety of the snacks that you offer and uh, what's your best seller? Yeah, we try to, like if you boil everything down in a business, you know, everybody talks about what the markup is, what your profit is, what your net is. We always like to say, what is the last amount of money that you end up with after everything's all done, right? And uh, that is oftentimes not as uh, big as you might think and especially in the coffee business, it doesn't matter what kind of business you're in. If you end up with five to 10% left after everything's all said and done, that's probably where everybody ends up. Is that you know, some, some make a little bit more, some make a little less. But uh, you know, we, uh, I don't know what necessarily a markup is because we're taking raw ingredients and we're building it all through the process. So it's kind of hard to make that uh, reference. So back to, but the best sellers, I can certainly talk about that. Um, from day one, the thing that has sold the most in our coffee shops of our baked goods has been the white chocolate raspberry scone. I mean, that is just a surefire local favorite and everybody loves that. If somebody wants to start a chain of coffee shops, Wes, how do they go about it? I know that that's a long process, but if you give it to us in a nutshell, I think it would help. Yeah. Uh, it'd be the same as starting any chain of anything, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you start with one and you grow. In our case, you know, it was uh, uh, one and then six months later, the second one. And then, you know, it would just kind of uh, compound it from there. But again, it goes back to what is your business plan and how are you going to accomplish that? And uh, that is also then the part that leads you into how much capital is that need to, to make that all happen? And then what length of time? And then probably most importantly, what's your uh, level of risk? You know, how much risk do you want to take? You can try and push this and go really fast. Yeah. And we've seen that in lots of business where it go really fast and then they go really fast out the door. Mm -hmm. So uh, ours is built on sustainability and that's really the key. You know, when I talked about building from profit, uh, it's super important to us to make sure that we're profitable and growing and that they kind of dovetail together. So, um, you know, starting from one to the next, and then how many do you want to do? You know, uh, we could easily say, hey, we want to go after and do 100 stores, uh, but what's that mean? What's the toll it's going to take on, you know, our family in particular? Mm -hmm. And then uh, what's the best way in which we grow? So it's, right. it's all about that. And you've got a new concept too. So in a way, it's got to be proven first before you start Absolutely. scaling it. Yep. You, you did that really, really, really well. Thanks. So, yeah. How important is Wi-Fi in your locations? Do you have it in all locations? Yeah, Wi-Fi is uh, critical. And, uh, you know, it's been critical for a long time uh, and, and becomes more important, right? So we have IT guys that work for us that, you know, constantly working for us and getting all of the stuff in the right place. And it's gotta be at the right speed. It has to be, you know, in a right uh, geographic area. And uh, and then, you know, it's uh, controlling content. You know, there could be some people that are in our stores. We don't know what they're looking at. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would be totally inappropriate for them to be looking at something that's inappropriate in front of a uh, family-friendly environment like we have. So you do have some, uh, yeah, some filters walls there. Yeah, to keep that. So uh, Wi-Fi is super critical. Um, you know, traveling, people are on the move now, right? There's not as many people in an office. And so uh, the Wi-Fi is super critical to us. And, uh, uh, and anybody who comes into our stores because people love to sit around, drink coffee, and uh, be on their laptop. That makes sense. So as you grow from one shop to the next to the next, uh, I would imagine you have the need for more employees, more staff, certain roles need to be filled. Can you walk us through that in a one to two minute what that looked like for you? Yes. What, what do our viewers who are starting a shop with mm -hmm. one or two, and now they're scaling, 
what do they need to plan for when it comes to staff? Yeah. Who are the crucial ones? Yep, yep. So uh, the, fir <laughs> the first one that we ever uh, hired that was really a key part of what we do today is our CFO. And he was a guy that volunteered. His wife was our first manager. And she, she actually volunteered him and said, hey, uh, my husband, he's an accountant and he loves coffee. Uh, he'd be happy to Perfect set up your books, you know, and, and he'll just do it, you know, as a volunteer. And uh, who would have known that 18 years later, you know, he's our CFO and runs all the finance. So that's number one, the most CFO. important thing. Uh, you know, uh, somebody who's going to run operations. Okay. And then, uh, you know, uh, who's going to do all the stuff that goes into whatever business it is that you're in. In our case, we have various managers that run roasting and baking and distribution and uh, truck driving and you know all those kind of things, those people. But that didn't happen from day one, right? You kind of evolutionary grow into each one of those as you go. And it started very, very small. And we would, you know, we never had an office uh, until about 11 years ago. And uh, we were just meeting in stores and we'd just kind of meet up as we needed to and kind of quick huddle and then we go. Mm -hmm. And now today we actually have an office and uh, we're running out of space because we have more people in the office. And, you know, all that kind of stuff. Really cool. Yeah, yeah. very fortunate. You've got that set of people that yeah. are just the crucial core, to the your core success. family members yeah. are the key, right? Yep. Yeah. One of the things we're, we're seeing and people are enjoying is cold brewed coffee. And I see you've got that here. So tech, tell, tell, tell us a little bit about the process yeah. and how that's different. And what's behind us? Yeah, so uh, hot brewed coffee is what everybody is familiar with, right? It's uh, you have it in your home. It's where hot water goes over uh, ground coffee and creates the magic of coffee. Uh, cold brewed coffee is simply taking those grounds and then letting them sit in cold water for a period of time. And in our case, we're letting them sit for about 16 hours, and it uh, gives you that opportunity for. Um, gathering all the great taste out of coffee with a very low acidity. So whereas hot coffee is, has a higher acidity, uh, cold brewed coffee is 67% less acidic. Wow. So it's super Big smooth, number. it's unbelievable, and uh, one of my favorite uh, ways to drink coffee, and it's becoming you know, a real uh, thing that people love. And this is, this is everything cold brew right here? This is all cold brew related. This is a 300 gallon tank system, which allows us to uh, not only create the cold brew over a 16 hour period, but then move it from one tank to the next mm -hmm. by filtering and uh, giving us that opportunity to have some real fresh cold brew here. And this and is it, the end product right here? That's um, it, loving it. I love my yeah. cold brew guys. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, we uh, bottle that in uh, gallons, and then it's shipped out to our stores and served um, fresh to our guests. You know, I got to get one of these for my garage, Wes. Yeah, you should. Be Everybody set. needs one of these. That'd be set for how long, you think? A couple months? Uh, a couple yeah, months? probably. And it would still be good, too. <laughs> still be good. The crazy part about this system is that uh, this looks like a microbrewery, right? It does. Yeah, and uh, yeah. that's what we're doing. We're microbrewing cold brew. How do you stay competitive? You know, we try and keep up with uh, what people want, right? If we can, uh, our business is based on service. Uh, you know, we, we, we love to serve others. And so if we can create something that meets the need of someone, then uh, that's what we're about. We just happen to be in a great space where people are addicted to coffee and they love it. So, uh, you know, they've got to come in here and they have to get that experience every day. That part's taken care of. Yeah, nothing that part's you can do about it. No, nothing <laughs> I can do about you know people's uh, habits that way. Uh, but all we can do is influence you know them as best we can uh, by creating great experience and uh, great products. Uh, so it's fresh beans, you know, that are roasted right here at this facility, and uh, then it's our fresh bakery that is delivered straight to our stores every single day, and uh, is fresh every day. You know, those are our uh, difference makers for us and things that uh, we can do that uh, help us control uh, the marketplace. Yeah, I think that's really cool. I think nowadays people are catching on to local uh, homemade, quote unquote, mm. and I can't see the big box, you know, Starbucks and a few other chains doing what you're doing. Well, you know, especially in the uh, bakery area. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. this is all fresh every day. 
It's uh, the best ingredients. Uh, it's artisan baking. It's not like, uh, you know, uh, we're buying mixes and putting them in something and serving them. Everything is mixed, you know, at about 4 a.m. You know, in the day, it's all prepared during the day. It's baked off that evening, goes onto the trucks, gets out to the stores and served fresh the next morning. So it's, it's quite the process. Wes, I love these cards. I see them all over town. I've yep. had a number of clients hand them over to me as a gift card. Yep. So um, is, this a, is this a gift card or does this have a loyalty uh, yep. program behind it? Tell us a little bit about that, how that evolved where it is today. I'm glad you asked. You know, that's a really vital part of our business. Uh, people are in the habit of coffee on a da daily basis and sometimes multiple times a it's day. A good thing. And so they want to feel like uh, uh, they're getting some advantage from that. And, and we're happy to give that to them. So you can go along and uh, drink 12 small cups of coffee, uh, regular black coffee that, you know, isn't gonna cost you very much and uh, get 12 of those throughout a certain period. And then uh, you get a free drink. And on that free drink, you go big or go, yeah, go big, man, you know, and you can get whatever you like. So it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. People love that part of it. It's also a gift card. We see them loaded with all kinds of money on them and they're giving us gifts. And then people translate that into usage and then loyalty and on and on and on. So it's a, yeah, it's a great pro program. We've been uh, very happy with it and allows us to uh, keep in constant communication with our guests. That's awesome. Do you have any person specifically buying 12 just so he can get to that 13th one? Oh yeah, that happens all the time. <laughs> I can see that happening, uh, yeah. But then you've also <laughs> got the ones that have thousands of points. Uh, that they've gathered and uh, they keep telling me that they're going to coffee for life. Well, now they, they actually think that they're going to get to buy one of our stores with some, some, a certain amount of points. And I keep reminding them that uh, that's probably not that's, possible. Well, but, they, uh, get, they, if can they get a billion points. Yeah, there you go, a billion points. So that's a coffee cup. Cool. So that's awesome. Some people want to do the hands on, they want to have start out, you know, exactly doing the roasting as well as serving coffee. And you can do that in a small scale and just serve for what you need. But as you grow, and in our business, we had to you know, have some bigger equipment and uh, it was easy to scale without roasting ourselves because we could just put the demand on somebody else and order as we needed. Right. Uh, but now it's you know really a part of our business and a big part of our business. Yeah, so it goes back to what you talked about earlier, that's a business plan. Yep. And whether roasting is part of that plan or not. Absolutely. Well, this is kind of an open-ended question. I mean, what's next for Woods Coffee? Hmm. You know, I don't know. Uh, you know, we have all kinds of plans. Uh, currently, we're sitting in a unique time in history, uh, 2020. You know, uh, known as the Corona year, and uh, we don't know how that's going to impact our business. You know, what are the changes that will happen when we reopen on a bigger scale, and how does that impact us for years to come? Um, you know, does the virus come back at a later date? So for us, it's uh, we're still moving forward, planning for new stores and our growth and our expansion. Um, but uh, you know, some of that is. Uh, just on pause for the moment while we kind of evaluate things. Uh, but even saying that, uh, we were evaluating property yesterday uh, to see if that would be another great site for us. And uh, we keep that pipeline constantly moving because uh, we've got lots of competition for sites mm -hmm. and we, we want the best sites. And those aren't always available to us because we're not Starbucks. And so we have to take what's left and figure out great places to go and find properties that uh, maybe uh, somebody didn't think would ever be a coffee shop and how do we repurpose those and so that's what we do yeah and so we're right now we're retooling you know how do we do things better how mm -hmm. do we do things more efficiently uh, what gets us down the road further and uh, what makes us better at our craft and so we're, we're doing that and preparing our stores uh, for that time when we can be back in a, uh, a new dimension mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're, I think it's tough for all of us during these uncertain times, but it's amazing to see how much innovation comes out of these moments in, in our history. And uh, innovation personally, innovation business-wise, uh, it's amazing. I'm sure that many of us are going to come out more innovative, more high-tech, mm -hmm. uh, more efficient, more lean. Yep. Um, I hope so. Yeah. We're, we're working hard on it. Yep, absolutely. Yep. 
And uh, I know you guys, if you haven't watched Lean, I always bring that word up. That's from our uh, two episodes, Paul Akers. Scroll down in our videos and do check them out. Amazing principle of being lean in your life, in your business. It'll change you forever. You guys, thank you so much for watching our channel. Uh, two episodes of incredible information from Wes Herman. Uh, YouTube promotes channels that are engaging, where you're asking comments, we're providing feedback. So we ask you that you please do that. Comment below. Ask a lot of questions. We've got our blog in the description below. If we didn't answer your questions in this episode, we will answer them in the blog. Come back to us, share the channel. We appreciate you and we'll see you next time. We've got some great things coming.